started running today at uh, probably right around 9 a.m., 8.30, and it's uh, 12.40. Getting to that time, it's important. You gotta get the time on your feet. Um, I've really been taking my time today, stopping to use the restroom, walked a couple times, stuff like that, so it's really taking my time with it. Very slow, calm running. 22 miles a day. <clears throat> probably the second to last long run that's gonna mimic how far I'm gonna go on marathon day. Although, just like powerlifting, there's not a real mimicker of uh, what I'm gonna be asked to do on race day. Powerlifting was always the same. You know, if I was gonna squat 900 pounds in a competition, I would get to 775 and 825 and maybe 850 maybe 875. I'd leave the rest up to what's called meat magic, contest magic. And for me, when I was young, younger in my powerlifting career, I could always step up to the plate and do really well. Actually, when I got older though, for some reason, I needed things that mimicked a little bit closer to the competition. So I had to adjust because it didn't always didn't work as well when I got older. 22 miles today, I think 10 miles next week, and then maybe one more week of doing like uh, 24 miles or something like that. Got to find repetitive, you know? So for me, just kind of getting in here, this form, this technique, just kind of slugged out for as long as I can maintain it. When I'm running this, this far, I like to do stuff that kind of kills time. It kills distance. So this will blow off a little bit of time. I'm going to this track, take a lap or two, and then I'll head back. I'll go back to my car, and my car has more liquid and rations and whatever else I need. Yeah, so I, I've never run 26 miles. That's what's asked on race day. A marathon is 26.2 miles. It's 26 miles followed by 200 meters. It's supposed to be pretty epic too to watch the pros come in and hustle down the last like 800 meters or so. It's supposed to be really fun to watch. You know, for me, I'm hoping that at mile 24, I feel like, yeah, fuck yeah, like I got more. Like right now, I still feel really good in the run. Even right now, this is still, it's still a little early in this run. Like we're at mile 15 and I got 22 to do for today. So it's easy to talk tough now. And it's easy to say, oh yeah, I wanna feel, feel strong at mile 20. We'll check back in and see where I'm at at mile 20. That's why I talk a lot about mental toughness. I think it's, uh, it's a little bit misunderstood. You can be as mentally tough as you'd like, but there's a skill set that surrounds it usually. So it doesn't matter how mentally tough you are. If, you, if you've only played like football and done some sports and you're just big and strong, but you have no efficiency with like MMA, well, you're gonna get knocked out probably really, really easy and or tapped out by someone who's proficient at striking and all those other things. So you would think, oh, the guy that knocked the other guy out was tougher. Could be, I guess, but toughness is hard to, it's hard to measure. And I guess my main point is, is that it's not about being tough, it's about developing a skill set. You can make yourself tougher and stronger through developing the development of skill sets. But anyone could be like a big giant pussy. They could be someone that thinks is a geek or nerd or dork, or they think you're dumb, fat, stupid, or whatever. Anyone, any one of us, ugly, short, or otherwise, can develop these skill sets and become a fucking monster and develop these skills that people would say, oh, Look how you know, tough that guy is, how resilient that guy is. They're not resilient by accident. They're resilient because they worked at it and they worked for it for a long time. And this is how you build it out right here. It's how you build resilience. But this is also specific resilience. This is resilience just with running. That's it. <laughs> a little bit of mental acuity too because of what movement does for your brain and what it does for the mind, body, spirit. But it's not gonna make me tough uh, if I was to go try to fight in a war or something like that. Name of the game is to find a pace that you can manage. And for today, 
it's like between 13 and 14 minutes is kind of slow. But for 26 miles, it might be appropriate for me for now. I think one of the, one of the worst things you can do is sometimes take some of this stuff too seriously, especially when you're just starting. What I always say is like, you're not gonna be that good anyway. So have some fun with it. Just relax. You know, I am putting the music on, I am getting into it, trying to get into a flow, into a mode, but also just still having fun with it and trying to be loose. I think sometimes you make it too serious, put too much stress on yourself. And there's no reason to do that. There's no reason to try to have it be perfect. You're only gonna do so well with it when it's new anyway. Patience, patience, patience. If I need to stop, I stop. Need to drink, I drink. If I need to fart, I fart. Try to be careful. And I'm really trying just to let the muscles be loose, which you might've noticed from some videos that I posted. You know, I don't, I don't think it's that common to see people's like feet from this vantage point that I'm always filming on. At least I haven't seen a lot of it, so I don't even know what that should look like. But something I observed is that there's a pretty good like contraction in my leg every time I land. And I'm not saying that there shouldn't be a contraction of some sort, but in just thinking about that, I'm like, oh, I'm landing what looks to be like kind of aggressively. And then my feet are pointed out. And then I get like a, like this kind of wave of skin tissue, fat tissue, and then muscle goes and it flexes. It's a nice contraction and it's to help me absorb the landing, right? And that's what I'll run into. If I run into anything, if I have any problems on run, just my legs get really tight and they get numb towards the end. And so I'm like, okay, well, how do I mitigate that? Maybe I can't eliminate it all the way, but what if I, what if my run is more of a roll? You see how we got a roll going? Like there's no stop, there's no, it's like I'm landing on my heels and I know people don't dig that. It's a little periods of time for my run. This might be really advantageous to adopt this method. Even without the landing on the heels, if that makes it too mad or triggered, you know, I can lean forward a slightly, just a bit, get off the heels and still kind of roll through it. Well, that's some of the stuff I've been thinking about recently and lately. How do I just make this 26 miles just another, like a walk in the park, you know? And I think a way to make it a walk in the park is not to make it so hard by trying to really run it. Why not just figure out like an advanced way to walk it? Jogging is like an advanced walk. Here's a walk and there's plenty of heel striking going on when you walk. People don't get too upset by that. But once we got a little bit more locomotion going on, people get upset. But low and slow, what's wrong with just chilling right in here? For three, four hours, seems to me like that's what millions of people do when they run a marathon. The big risk of injury in running is because people are just, they're going too fast and it's repetitive. There's no break, there's no rest. So if your knee kind of hurts you for some sets of 10 of leg press in the gym, it's not that big of a deal because you might've only done 30 reps and maybe like 15 of them or 10 of them were done at, at an intensity that could potentially be harmful to that compromised knee but you have a kind of a shitty knee and you come out here and you, you land on it with kind of a, your foot pointed out, your knee caving in and you land on it, land on it, land on it, land on it every, and if I'm landing on it and I'm, I'm actually trying to run fast, well now I'm landing on it even faster. How do we prevent that? How do we slow that down? Well, let's maybe not jump as much. Running is really just a bunch of jumps well, what if we don't jump? Maybe we can still have some good speed and good practices, but keep it smooth without getting hurt. So that's where my mind's at, stuff I'm working on. And again, for those of you new to, new to running, if you need to stop and stretch and stop, stop and breathe and stop and drink, do it before you think you need it. Be a big pussy. Do it before you think you need it. Today's workout, it's gonna take a really long time, we see my running clock, we're getting close to 4.10. 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 4.10, 
four hours and 10 minutes. Am I disappointed with my time for today? I got about 16 miles to show for it after four hours? No, I'm not disappointed because I didn't have an expectation in the first place. And if I did have an expectation, it would be something that I worked on uh, interpreting in accordance to just where I'm at currently. Am I gonna be able to run as fast as this girl? She's running by right now? No, she's probably been running for a little while. I, I'm still new, I'm still new, so I gotta stay in my lane. There's a lot of people out there trying to run 10 minute, 11 minute mile paces, and they're 12 minute mile pace people. That's why people get hurt with running. So don't do that. Yeah, but I'm, I'm a perfectionist. Oh, really, you are? Huh, didn't know that. I hear so many people say that, I'm super competitive though. And I'm like, you're a perfectionist and you're super competitive and you're not anywhere near the levels of achievement that I've had. So go fuck yourself. And I think that's maybe the problem is that people are trying to make up for their shitty fucking high school football history that they had. They sucked in high school. Well, guess what? Now you fucking suck as an adult. You're not that fast, you're not that good, so calm the fuck down. Seriously, calm the fuck down. Go slower, take the long road. And when you're 50 and you do a 400 meter in 55 seconds, that's when people will go, fuck, dude. I didn't know you could do that. Well, you'll only be able to do that if you fucking take your time. Low and slow, nice and easy. Ain't nothing gotta be hard. No one believes me, I don't think. No one believes me. They don't wanna believe me, they wanna work hard. Go ahead, you keep doing it your way. I'll keep taking it like uh, by stride, you know? Taking everything in stride, in my stride, my little tiny short stride I got going on. Not in somebody else's stride. That's how you get hurt, over striding, over striving, over reaching. What's overreaching? You reach for something you're not ready to stretch for yet. Don't do it. Never broke a bone, never had surgery, 30 years of training, 30 years or maybe like 20 years of powerlifting, 10 years of powerlifting at a pretty high level, five years of professional wrestling, played football from the time I was a kid, no injuries in football. I guess maybe uh, I hurt my hip sprinting one time and just like normal bang ups from football. Wrestling, I got kind of clunked up a bunch, but still able to go to practice all the time. Yeah, playing football, even on a junior college level. Chad Smith, Ocho Cinco, Santa Monica City College. Got fucking waxed more times than I would like to admit, including one time by Steve Smith. Gave me a concussion, made me throw up. And I know he only weighs like 170, but he fucked me up. Still around, still training, I'm still going for it. It's because I don't mind taking my time with it. I don't mind getting beat. I don't mind losing, I don't mind learning. In fact, I love that stuff. I like to lose. I like to lose, I like to pay attention. Okay, all right, I'm watching. I'm paying attention. I lost today, I'm gonna lose tomorrow. And probably the day after. Yeah, we'll see. Three years from now, five years from now, I could play the long game. I could play the long game. You know how many people were, were way more successful than me? I, I wasn't, uh, it took me until I was about 35 to really get any points on the scoreboard for anything in life. It wasn't easy. It wasn't always easy to be patient. Oh, what do you do again? Oh, you're still, oh, you're lifting. Oh, you're, oh, you're pro wrestler. Like, was, do you make any money in that unless you're like the top guy or, huh? Powerlifting, oh, it's not like kind of a, that's not like any Olympics or anything, right? Oh, well, like, what do you do for work then? <laughs> I had to go through that for many, many years. Many, many years. Just kept staying in my lane, knowing it was right in my gut. Trust in my gut instinct, trust in my intuition, and finding the right woman huge part of it but you can't find a right woman unless you're making something of yourself so people out there looking to attract the right person make yourself attractive get to work 
Invest in the best thing you'll ever invest in in the first place, and that's yourself. Then other people want to sink their time into you. They're going to want to put their love into you. They're going to want to be around you and support you. All you got to do is push in yourself, lean in yourself. That's it. What do you want to do? You already know what you want to do. Don't tell me about it. Go do it. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Everyone's got a lot of those. I got a secret hack for you guys. Secret hack for people that get chafed. The secret hack for people that get chafed is to use beef butter. I have, I have beef tallow. That's called beef butter from a company called Carnivore Crisps. Rubbed it on my hands, took it and smeared it all over the back of my butt cheeks and kind of in the middle a little bit too. And then having like tights helps a lot too and having the right uh, underwear and all that stuff can really help a lot. But there's your hack. Grab some beef butter and stick it on your ass. Taking my time, a little bit of a hill coming up here. You can just walk through it. I got uh, some aspirin in here. You got aspirin and sodium bicarbonate in here. Sodium bicarbonate, a little bit of creatine. Buffer, it's a buffer. I'm trying to uh, manage stress, manage uh, energy, manage waste, buffer waste during the run. At this point in the run, it'd be really good for me to be able to uh, pull together Pull together a handful of uh, like 20 minute runs would probably be a great way to end this day. So I don't know how many of those I need to string together, but a couple of them would be good. Maybe a few of them I do 20 minutes. Maybe a few of them I do 10 minutes with small breaks of walking. Again, this is a, it's a long run. It's also a training run. And so I can take what happened today, the results of today, and I can go back and examine them and say, hey, could I have gone faster? Would it still have been safe? Because what I'm thinking about too is, what's my recovery like from this day? So if it's anything like it was last week, I went in the gym on Sunday, pulled the sled, trained some legs, and did a bodybuilding workout. Planning on doing the same thing tomorrow. And then boom, right back into training Monday. And actually last week I ran uh, two miles on Sunday as well. But today's Saturday. Saturday is my long run day. All these things would be factored in. It's not just about like your training day and like how fast you did your training day. How, how are you recovering from those days? This is our double shot nine bullet. We have grape and we have pina colada and I think like a lemon lime or something like that. Got at least three or four different flavors. Check it out, mindbullet.com. I just do small dosages. Small dosage goes a long way. And um, if I need to hit up a little bit more before this runs over, then I'll do that too. Here we go. One thing I would just warn you is that if you are gonna rest and walk, just be careful, don't rest and walk too much for too far because <clears throat> then your body get really stiff. So 90 seconds, two minutes, maybe three minutes. That'd be about as much as you'd want to do that for. Four more miles. Woo! Hopefully from following some of the stuff over the years, you guys are getting some examples of seeing you don't have to be defined by what people think that you do. You can continually move into different spectrums, into different sports, into different things, try different things and continue to make progress in many different things. It doesn't have to just be that you're uh, subject to staying within the confines of one thing your whole life. I think people would think there couldn't be any more opposite squatting a thousand pounds and being a power lifter and bench pressing 854 pounds and then transferring that strength into marathon running. But I ran uh, three, one, two, three, 
four half marathons and uh, I got one marathon coming up April 17th. I also went from 330 pounds to doing a bodybuilding show when my powerlifting career was over. I'm also someone that lost 110 pounds. But out of the different things you guys see, powerlifting, bodybuilding, running, owning Slingshot, Mind Bullet, within your brand supplements. That's such a tiny fraction of who I am. I'm a brother, I am a son, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a friend to many. I'm involved in many different things, many different relationships, many different projects. So much of what is seen just kind of represents a fraction of um, stuff that I kind of do physically that's easier to share, you know, tangible things. Um, I don't share much of my personal life. I don't share much of stuff with my kids. I've always felt to me, and everyone can do what they want, but I've always felt it's not fair to my children or my wife to try to make them part of these videos or pictures and stuff. Occasionally I can't help it because I am a dad and I'm really proud, but you, you're not gonna see you know, pictures of me and my daughter Quinn or me and my son. And uh, that's not because I don't hang out with them. I'm with them every day. My favorite part of every single day is something that never really gets seen by social media. And that's me sitting down and eating dinner with my family. And it happens quite a bit. And four or five days a week, depending on everyone's schedule, or going to a local restaurant, Makuni here in Davis, or Bud's over in Dixon. I truly look forward to that every day. And lifting and podcasting and running, it's all just kind of part of the day. It's like uh, my mental health and physical health hygiene. I need to scrub that every day. Otherwise, I can't be the same person to everybody. But you get to be many things in this life and many things in this world. And I see so much in people. I see so much strength in people. They have a lot of strength. <clears throat> they got a lot of discipline in a bunch of different areas, but then they fall short in an area or two and then they allow that to make them feel bad about themselves. And I don't dig that. I don't think that's a good way to go about doing things. I know a lot of really well-meaning police officers, firefighters, teachers, stay-at-home dads, stay-at-home moms, just people in general do a great job in life and they are disciplined, they are motivated. But then when it comes to this aspect of nutrition or running or exercise, they feel like they're lazy. And so what, maybe you haven't developed a real love for movement yet or a real love for a diet that you found yet. But remember, it's a skill set. It'll take a while for you to learn it and get used to it and to be able to have it be like a lifestyle change. I mean, it takes a long time to be able to teach yourself to get to bed at nine o'clock instead of 11.30. That's a habit and it's gonna take a while. You're gonna go, oh yeah, I forgot. I'm not supposed to fuck around on the phone. Oh yeah, I forgot. Like, I'm not supposed to be eating these foods and stuff like that. So it takes a while. Don't be so hard on yourself. Allow yourself time. It's going to take time. And if you keep cheating on your diet, then that means your diet doesn't work. If you, um, if you fast and then you overeat, your diet doesn't work. If you're on a ketogenic diet, but the weekend comes and you hit up an onslaught of carbohydrates, that diet didn't work either. You have to find things that are going to be manageable for you. And you have to figure out a way that you can sustain them for a period of time. It's the only way you're going to get good at things is to be able to do it for a long time. For, <clears throat> for me to get good at running, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a long while. 
but that's okay. Maybe other people don't have to bend down like this and stretch, but my uh, like kind of inner groin gets really tired and stiff. I gotta look like a newbie and a beginner and be hunched over during a race. Everybody looking at my butt cheeks while they're passing me. This is where I'm at. And over time, I'll get better and better. Powerlifting, I still remember my oldest brother calling me a pussy because I hated having that weight on my back when I was doing squats. And I remember, I think I was trying like 365. I was like in high school and I just like, I couldn't, like I could only like three quarters squat. Like it hurt too much, hurt my knees. It was hurting my upper back. And I think it was just way too heavy. I think I appropriately probably should have used like 275. I remember putting the weight back in the rack and then just getting done with the workout and being like really upset, pretty much crying in like the locker room of Gold's Gym. Cause I was trying to make my big brother proud and I was trying to like, you know, handle some weight, but then I, I threw the weight on and put my belt on and stuff and just did some half-assed version of a squat and it was hurting my upper back. And I was like, I don't think I'll ever figure this out. And I put the weight back and I remember my brother left and then the kind of governor of everything was just taken down and I just said, you know, what? I'm just gonna practice this. Let me see what happens if I practice with 25s on each side. So I just practiced for a few minutes, did a couple sets of squats, started to feel pretty good. And I'm like, you know what? I need to figure out a way to squat like this in this range of motion. And if I can't do this range of motion and I can't lift it this way, then I, I can't go up any higher. So then over the course of the next few weeks, I kept a more steady pace with it and worked on it. I still sucked at squats for many, many years, but it took a long time. I worked my way back up. Got to finish out this run. It took many years to get used to a squat. It took many years to get used to kind of building like a yoke of some traps and stuff. And kind of the point in sharing that story is, is like, I didn't have the structure to really handle a heavy squat at the time. So yeah, I was kind of being a baby because the weight was hurting like the back of my neck or whatever, but I also rightfully so, like I think I weighed like, um, I think I weighed like 200 or something. I was a pretty big kid, but I got, at one point I got to like 240 at a very young age, like 16, but I fixed that by uh, doing some track and stuff like that and getting more active. But anyway, um, I didn't have the structure to handle those weights. And so I had to go back and do the lift the right way and then do all the assistance exercises to build up that structure. And then everything I've ever done turns out it needs a good structure and you need a good plan. And it turns out that everything that you wanna do that's gonna be fucking awesome in life is gonna take a long time. So it ain't just your squats, but it helps to have a good upper back, good traps, good rear delts for your squats, just like it helps to have good systems in place with your business and a nice foundation of what it is you do at your business so everyone else can understand what the overall mission is so the business can continue onward for one year, two years, five years, eight years, 10 years, 12 years, and so on with a lot of success. The structure, time, balance, it's all part of all of it, no matter what you're doing. Around 13 and a half minute mile pace. I feel like I could still, I feel like I could still go a little faster, um, but legs are pretty stiff. So I'm gonna stay right here. It's better to finish workouts saying, oh, you know what? I think I could have, I think I could have pushed on the gas pedal a little harder. You save that for the next time. Rather than going home with an injury, saying, oh man, I wish I could have had that one back. Shouldn't have attempted that. Shouldn't have done that today. Go down here for a minute. Kill some time. Kill some, kill some mileage. Might be short. I'm on too much kratom, I think, to get my ways back going the right way. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, this is a nice lap. I've never seen this before. This is sick. A little mini lap, victory lap. People ask a lot about pace. Um, I'm a 13, I'm between 12 and 13 minute mile pace for many, many workouts that are low, slow, longer workouts or longer mileage. And then I do a wide variety of other things. And you can see all that in faster in 50, which had a crazy response. I think there was like 8,000 downloads. Fucking awesome. Over at withinyoubrand.com. Give us your email address. We shoot it over to you. It's what uh, Dan Garner programmed for me. Has lifting, has the running in there. But we did tempo runs. We did something called the fart lick, which is like speed play. Pick up the speed for a minute or so. But yeah, there's a little variety of different kinds of workouts that I do. So I'm not always at that slow pace, but it's my belief that you can jog at a very slow pace and become a very efficient, very fast runner without even really practicing much speed stuff. Kind of interesting. Nice to get a song that really relaxes you, especially as your workout comes towards the end. Malibu, California, 19, 1998. I get in the car with a guy named Jonathan Holiday, and he picks me up and he's got like this on his face. I don't know if you can see that, right? <laughs> he had a glazed donut and it looked like somebody just shot a wad all over his face. Like that. John was my first wrestling coach. So shit like that, just weird shit like that. My brother was with me too and we were laughing so hard. Shit like that happened all the time. Living in that area, Santa Monica, trained at Gold's Venice a lot. A lot of weird people, a lot of weird shit. But really, John, what the fuck? He was fat too, so. We believed him that it was from a donut, not from something else, but it looked suspicious. Kind of leave it at that. Use your butt going uphill. Lean forward. Use your tushy. Remember what I'm running for. I'm running for a lot of pain other people carry. That's the way I view it. My own pain, my own struggles, the things I'm embarrassed about, the things I suck at, the things I gotta work on. But more importantly, the stuff I see from other people. The chronic pain that my brother Chris has lived his whole life with. It took my brother Mike's life early was, he just wanted to be great. He wanted to be, I don't know, for some reason he felt like he wasn't enough and felt like he always wanted to strive for more. And in that process kind of made him lose his mind a bit. He was bi bipolar. He had a lot of his own pain, psychologically, mentally, physically, all that. And then my own mother, same thing. And I know a lot of people that are like this. My mom was abused as a kid and grew up with alcoholic parents. And it was just hard for her to ever get the momentum that she needed to be the person that she wanted to be. And so therefore she poured more time and effort into other people, including her children, to instill us with confidence to make us strong, it was hard for her to gain her strength. And then my father, 75 days, Jamaica Queens Hospital, surgery after surgery after surgery years ago. My dad's always been kind of a portly fella, short and stout. I think he got down to like 140 pounds when he was in there. Face was all gaunt and sucked in. They didn't know what was wrong with him. Time and time and time and time again, my mother stayed by his side the whole time. 
It was expensive. Uh, it took a lot of resources. But fuck, man, if my dad can go through that for 75 days, or my brother Chris can live with chronic pain his entire life, and my mom can overcome the things she overcame, then I should be able to put some pain, strap some fucking pain in my back for five hours, however long it takes me to do this marathon in Boston. So those are the things I think about when I'm up against it, when times get tough. I can also think about where I came from and also think about what I've done. All those things will be a nice boost, a nice shot in the arm for me to finish strong in Boston. Went from crying with 365 on my back in a squat to being able to squat over a thousand pounds, probably at least 30 or 40 times if you count competition and practice. Did it every week for a while. Same thing with benching 800 pounds. Did it every week for a while. It was just part of the training. Going up to seven, eight, nine, ten plates aside. It was just like part of it. 10, 45 pound plates aside. Something I actually did at one point. Uh, off of some boards in a bench shirt. <laughs> Those accomplishments, they took a lot of time. They took a lot of effort. And it took me understanding that I needed to be smart with my training, but I also realized and recognized that I have to push a little further than I might like, or a little further than what's prescribed. Not too much further, but a little further. Might have to do an extra set. Might have to stay at the gym for an extra hour. Might have to put other, my time into other people so I can understand this trade better, so I can help my guys lift more, make the gym more competitive, and as a result, I'll lift more weight as well through the process of helping them and making them great. If they beat me, that's gonna turn me into an animal. And that's exactly what I was able to do. Super training gym, you can look at the old stats. I didn't have the highest bench, I didn't have the highest squat, and I didn't have the highest deadlifts. Those are all owned by other lifters that I coached. But I did get everybody on the total, and I'm proud of that, because that's what makes you a power lifter in the first place, is having that total. And right now, I basically feel like I'm gonna fucking hurl, barf all over the place. Legs are shot, but I'm talking and I'm running, right? So how bad could it be? Feet are really numb. Like, uh, like kind of like they fell asleep almost, you know? And that's why it's important. Like I did so much walking today. I would say that I probably walked a mile today because I walked probably 30 times, sometimes just for 60 seconds, sometimes just for 30 seconds. But then I also walked quite frequently, maybe even more than 20 times. Anyway, I walked a lot to pace myself for this. Stopped a bunch too. Peed probably four times. Stopped at my car twice. Stopped at my dad's house. So a handful of stops in there. It takes a lot of liquid for me to be able to make it through this. I'll go down here. I did uh, probably a gallon today through the pack I had and through this. Go down here, come back, finish it out. We're almost there. A little downhill action. Pretty good pace. I'm keeping for me. Still 230 pounds, by the way. <laughs> Haven't lost a pound. Been running everywhere. Haven't lost a pound. Part of the bell jeans. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Mom. Appreciate it. I said, let's see where you're at, you know, at around 20 miles. If you're still feeling like a tough guy, uh, I don't feel that tough, but I feel pretty good. Um, and look, always got a trick up my sleeve, 22.6 miles. So we're pushing beyond the prescription of 22 miles today and getting that 23 miles in. That's it. We can't run more for today. There we go. 23 miles. Got it all done. Circumnavigated Davis, California. Zipping around that yellow, yellow thing. That's me. 
let's see let's uh i think the cool part is to check the miles towards the end and uh yeah, it looked like I kept pace pretty good. The last two miles looked like they're almost the fastest of the whole thing, which is not necessarily the goal, but that's just cool to be able to pace yourself and to have that uh, little extra in there. One thing that I'm learning is like, if you just do a pace the whole time, like, for example, if you did like a 13 minute mile pace the entire time with no stopping, I don't think people have a grasp of how impressive that is and how amazing that is. It's, it's really, it's really a challenging thing to do for some runners out there who've been doing it for a long time. They probably don't think of it much, you know, um, it, it's probably sounds like, uh, you know, 315 for three sets of five and squat which doesn't sound like anything to a power lifter, but it's just a very, you know, my perspective on things has changed so much over the years. And uh, I, I now do think that, fuck, 100 pounds is heavy. If you don't think 100 pounds is heavy, go pick up a 100 pound dumbbell in the gym. You know, I think a lot of times our, our uh, perception gets really warped by really exceptional and really amazing athletes. There's some really unbelievable people out there lifting some crazy weights, running some crazy time. So we'll hear about someone that does, you know, a seven minute mile pace in a marathon or something like that. But that's somebody who's, they just have a real proficiency at running. They, 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 they took them time to get there. And uh, these things are, these things are really, really impressive skill sets to get to. And when you do these things for a long time, and you start to get good at them. Just like someone playing the guitar really well or something, right? Like there's things where you're like, yeah, I just, that's just how it sounds when I play the guitar because I've been playing it for 18 years or something like that. So it's impressive. The cool thing to know is that you can make so much improvement and so much change in a short period of time. If you dedicate yourself, Andy Frisella, has 75 hard, which if you've never looked that up before and you're looking to change your mindset and change your life forever, that'd be a great fucking place to start. <laughs> but shit, man, if you can stick with something for 20 days, 30 days, 50 days, even sticking with something for 20 days or so, you'll notice some pretty drastic improvements. And what I learned with run every day, which I got up to I forget how many days I got up to on that. It was like 150 or something like that before I ended up ended up in the hospital there. But I learned a lot of valuable lessons from that and that is just, you can change in an instant who you are right now in your knowledge base. You can go from right now not having an idea of uh, how to paint. And if you start, if you go to a painting class and you hire someone to help you, if you do it for 90 days straight, you're gonna know quite a bit and you're gonna be able to advance quite a bit. And the picture that you made in the beginning, uh, maybe it's something that's not even recognizable to where the picture that you have at the end, someone goes, either thinks it's cool or thinks it finally looks like something. So I, I just, I think it's fascinating and it's something that um, I just think is really neat about the human body, brain, mind, spirit, consciousness. When I get done with the Boston Marathon, if I start doing like jujitsu, and that's something that I like, uh, it is something that I'm gonna pursue after the Boston Marathon. If it's something I like, I'm gonna commit to it and see if I can get 90 days of it, 100 days of it, something like that, so I can see if I can get that. You try to get yourself to that point, you get that kind of click over. You get to that point where um, you no longer uh, don't want you want you no longer you want to make sure that it happens uh, frequently in your life you know same thing with working out or running it's uh, almost annoying when you don't get your workout in it's almost annoying you don't get your run in I'm going to try that with jujitsu and if I like it that's cool and if, if I don't dig it and it's not for me uh, that ain't a problem either shout out to our boy in SEMA he went out to Florida did Pan Ams uh, he got second place as a brown belt He's making huge strides and huge progress, and I'm sure, um, 
I'm sure he learned a lot from that process. But you know, there's a guy who did bodybuilding. Don't forget, Nsema was a professional bodybuilder. He did powerlifting for like 60 seconds, and he was really good at powerlifting. And man, he could have—he could have really. I think he could have done some damage in powerlifting. 800-pound squat, I think. 800-pound deadlift. I think those are things that that would happen easily for him. Um, it just take him a little bit to learn a little bit more on the bench press, but those are some huge numbers. Then he just shifts gears and does uh, jujitsu, and now here we are, six, seven years later, and he's just just doing such an unbelievable job. So anything that you suck at, whether it's music, recording videos, lifting, uh, your physique, anything, if you start to put 60 days, 90 days, 100 days into it, you'll be completely shocked at what you're able to do. I just did 23 miles and it wasn't that long ago where I was at Get Fit in Davis and I couldn't even step off of the treadmill, uh, which is, I don't even know how high, maybe six or eight inches off the ground because my legs were, um, they would cramp up. Like my legs feel like they're gonna cramp up right now. Um, but that's because I ran 23 miles. So now at least I have an excuse. But yeah, when I was 330 and 310 and 300 and 290 and so forth, you know, it took a long time to get myself conditioned enough to even get myself to where I could have adequate workouts that really meant something that helped me burn calories. Uh, before that time, it was um, just getting on and off the treadmill itself was like painful, which sounds weird to say now. Anyway, uh, I'm grateful for these workouts. If you want to follow along, you can go over to withinyoubrand.com, give us your email, and we will send you over the programming from my coach, Dan Garner. Uh, it gives you all the stuff I did for lifting and all the stuff I did for running. And you can, uh, you can start knocking it out, start kicking ass in some running. Fired up for the Boston Marathon. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later.